often people in pain don't feel particularly safe. And I think one of the, the fascinating things about working with people in pain is the need to provide something as best one can, a safe place for them to begin to talk about their issues, their life. And that has always been a fascinating thing to me, just looking at the deeper story. And so coming to the modern time, what is the story around someone's pain? It's a matter of believing the person and pain is what the person says it is, is very much part and parcel of the zone. If we come in from a perspective of not believing, then it always puts us in a place of judgment where we're trying to say, is this person for real or not? So I think it's a foundational thing that we need to believe the person in pain. Pain is what the person says it is, uh, very much a cornerstone of pain management. In the way we used to think about it often, we thought back pain was very much related to the disc in the back, only the structures of the back. In the new way of thinking about it, we're looking higher up into the nervous system and we're seeing that where pain persists, it's often more about sensitised pathways in the brain and spinal cord, so in other words, higher up. And so when one looks at that and when one recognises that the brain pathways are much more plastic than we used to think, it is possible to retrain the brain as we would say and potentially at the best end, although we can't always guarantee that, help people to work to the point where their pain does resolve. So this is about retraining the brain because essentially you can't retrain the disc in the back. A lot of the research that has looked at brain pathways has come from functional brain scans, things like functional magnetic resonance imaging. And so the thing that you would see on a brain scan with someone with chronic pain is that a lot of the pain associated areas are lit up. If they can retrain their brain in whatever way, it means that those pain associated areas no longer light up. So a sensitised system is calmed or damped down the person doesn't feel the pain that they once did. This is obviously at the best end of the spectrum, so we don't promise that, but it is a more hopeful way of looking at it than the previous line that pain would automatically persist for the rest of your life. So the whole new brain plasticity theory, if one calls it that, does bring in a greater optimism. It brings in more hope than what we've had before. We've been looking in the midst of our team about the language that we use and one of the, the words that we've been thinking about is healing and that's really changed our approach. We've been beginning to bring that into our discussions with people and just finding that it launches a whole different conversation. If in the old days we were talking about cure, it seemed to put a lot of weight on what we were doing medically, that cure was about what we could deliver an operation, a nerve block medication, whereas healing, although it includes that, goes broader and it invites the person to think about what can they change in their life that might be part of the solution. In the old days, old language, we were seeing that people who had persistent pain didn't really change very much. But we've observed that as we've changed our expectations, as we've changed our language, that we are seeing people getting better results. And there are some people now who do make major gains. They do heal, and in some situations, people's long-term pain, even though it's been there for many years, can go away completely. The language we use, our hopefulness, our belief that people can move ahead, is all part of this new optimism.